So I've been uh, playing around with VR um, on my sim for a couple of weeks now and I wanted to share with everyone some of my lessons learned. What you're looking at here is uh, Extreme Prototypes Lear 25D going into land at uh, KDCA in DC. Uh, some pretty good scenery here so I figured I'll just use this video as a backdrop while I go through my lessons learned. Also, I went ahead and got a refund for P3D V5 and I bought V4.5 and stood that up. Um, that's what I've been using. Can't do virtual reality in V5 simply because it crashes. So once they got that fixed, I'll go ahead and buy another license and then uh, start using my V5 install. So uh, let's get on with it. These are my lessons learned uh, regarding virtual reality with the Oculus Quest for flight simulation in P3D. Next lesson, go ahead and keep a lens cleaner right next to you. You're going to be forever wiping off the glass within the headset. And in my case, uh, cleaning off my glasses. Anything can dirty up your headset. Uh, in my case, it can be uh, your hair or uh, if you don't wear glasses, your eyelashes. Once you have everything ready, which includes the Oculus Quest, the Oculus Link cable or the anchor cable, good USB 3.0 port on your computer. Now it's time to get everything set up. Go ahead and download the Oculus desktop software, install it, and then plug in your headset. Now here's the thing. You're going to be going back and forth between looking at your computer screen and looking in your Oculus headset to get everything working. Okay? Follow the instructions and this is what you're looking for. Once you see this, this means that you're Oculus Quest desktop uh, and the headset is good to go for flight simulation. Now afterwards, even when you're not using your Oculus Quest headset, go ahead and leave it turned on and plugged in. Why? Well, the USB port will keep the battery charged and the Quest has an accelerometer in there so it knows when it's not being used and it'll go ahead and go to sleep. Once it's connected to the computer, after you reboot and you fire up the Oculus Quest desktop software, it remembers everything and you don't need to go in and define the play area and accept this prompt or accept that prompt. Just go ahead and leave it plugged in unless you want to use the Quest as a standalone VR headset. Next tip, go ahead and get yourself a nice big stash of AA batteries. Uh, these Oculus uh, Quest uh, controllers, they chew through batteries like candy. So go ahead and make sure you have a nice stash of batteries. Uh, to replace them when they go out. Now this next tip has something to do with the fact that P3D is at the bottom of the list of flight simulators with regards to VR support. Once you're in the cockpit all you have with you is your mouse. You need to develop muscle memory with regards to where all the primary controllers are. Where your throttle is, where your prop is, where the mixer is, and make sure you assign the primary uh, controls, uh, surface controls or whatever, the keys that are easily reachable. In my case, flaps and the gear, I know where they are with my eyes closed. You need to do that when you're flying in VR with P3D. Or you can try manipulating those control surfaces within the cockpit using your mouse, but it's a little bit more of a challenge for me. In my case, I just try to remember exactly where the controllers are. Also, you need to make sure that your mouse is easily accessible because you're going to be using it to control some of the switches and buttons and knobs while you're flying. Alright, let's just go ahead and watch this landing here. And I've noticed for the replays, in the case of uh, the Extreme Prototypes Learjet, you can actually see the reverse thrusters and the flaps on the replay. With some of the other planes, you don't see them. So I think it's a plane thing or add-on thing and not a simulator thing. Anyway, back to hints and tips. This next item deals with the VR settings in the simulator. Now, there's a whole bunch of settings and I have no idea what most of them are. However, there are two settings that you should make that's going to significantly improve your experience while using the Oculus Quest headset. 
First, go into the VR settings and set Enable Zoom to Yes. That way you don't have to keep moving your head back and forth like a chicken to see stuff within the cockpit. Just go ahead and zoom in using the regular zoom key that you have assigned. And this is what it looks like. So you can uh, sit there and zoom in from your pallet seat to whatever it is you need to look at. Next, go into the VR settings, scroll down to HMD display mode and change it from stereo to mono. This will cause a measurable bump in your VR frame rates. It says that it may reduce the field of view from stereo to mono, but the truth of the fact is you're not going to notice anything. In fact, it will make using the mouse to control the virtual cockpit within virtual reality a lot easier. Um, I won't go into the details, just trust me, you want to change from stereo to mono. One more thing, while you're at it, if you're using Chase Plane to manage your camera settings within the virtual cockpit, go ahead and set or create a separate virtual cameras in Chase Plane for VR because the default settings won't work, primarily because the uh, 3D on the screen versus 3D in virtual reality totally different. So what looks good on your screen, once you go into virtual reality, you're going to have to make adjustments so that you're sitting properly um, in the pilot chair. So go ahead and set up separate views within Chase Plane if you use Chase Plane for virtual reality. Alright guys, I saved the best for last. I found a video on YouTube uh, that shows you how to go into your registry. This is for Windows 10. Make a handful of registry changes and your frames will significantly improve. This is important because the frame rate in your VR headset is typically lower than the frame rate that you see on your screen. Make these changes and you will get much, much, much better frames in your flight simulator. I have posted a link to the video in the description below. And that's it. Once Lockheed Martin gets their act together and fixes it so that V5 works with VR with AMD graphics card, I'll go ahead and get another license and start simming with my P3D V5 installation. And there you have it. So, hope you guys found this video useful. My name is Flightsome Guy. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.